today's topic is about when everything feels like it's going wrong. I've never had that happen to me. I don't know if you had any experience. Well, I won't say that I've you know, lived in that state forever, but there certainly have been times in my life, in my business career, where it really did feel like it everything was going wrong. It may be a cycle or it may be chapters of our life that we end up feeling that way. But yeah, definitely had those experiences in the past. Yeah, me too. I've had a lot of rock bottom moments where it felt like everything was going wrong. And then when I would pull myself out of it and think, okay, I'm going to do whatever, some sort of a different method or a different course of action. And I think, okay, this is it. And then I would do it. And then that would go wrong. And those times when it mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. there was nothing that was working, paralyzing. Yeah, I had phrase that I used, you know, that I would get into these places where it did seem like everything was going wrong or something major would happen. And for me, I, maybe it was the, uh, the movie Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feeling like I was in the pit of despair. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Is that from yeah. that movie reference? Right, but yeah. anyway, it's feeling like you get into these places where anything that you're trying mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be working. And it just right. felt like, okay, I'm going to be in this and it's going to take me days, weeks, months, crawl back out of this. If you get out of it at all. Yeah. 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 And so today we want to share with you three main points that are going to help you with this. Number one, they'll explain what's going on and why it's so intense and give you hope. And number two, they'll give you some, some action to take. So first of all, understanding what's happening in the moment that we're feeling like things are going wrong. So something happens that goes wrong. So either we don't get the result we were wanting or that we were expecting or something completely unexpected goes wrong. In that moment that we have the negative emotion, so whether that is frustration, despair, worry, anxiety, anger, in that moment, the emotions we're feeling, whatever those negative emotions are that we're feeling, those are caused by stress chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol. And one of the effects of those chemicals, apart from mm -hmm. creating those feelings, those emotions, is that blood drains from the prefrontal cortex of the brain where we do our cognitive thinking to the back of the brain. And what that means is that as we're looking at the things that are going wrong, we don't have access to our cognitive thinking to be able to see solutions or see other options or see things differently at all. The brain hyper-focuses on the so-called danger and ignores everything else. And the problem with that is, although the conscious mind is separate from the unconscious part of the brain, when we're in that state, the unconscious part of the brain and that survival mechanism has taken over to the extent that the conscious mind is completely submerged in that state and we buy into it because it seems so real. Everything is clearly going wrong. And so in that moment, remembering that you don't have blood in that part of your brain, so you literally don't have access to the ability to see more clearly or to strategize or to problem solve or to see other options. Yeah. So it would be kind of that fight, flight, freeze response. Right. I know looking at other people, working with other people and seeing how they may have a propensity for one particular reaction in that moment. So when we kick into that lizard brain or that part of the brain that is throwing us into that fight, flight, freeze response, I know for myself, I think I had a, a tendency to lean toward the freeze part. So whenever I felt like things were going wrong, for me, that go-to response was to freeze up. I can't think, I can't move, I don't know how to move forward in this moment. So for me, it was a freeze response. Right. I've worked with others where their responsibility is kind of this frenetic action. It's like they're running. They're just like a, a chased animal mm -hmm. and they're, they're jumping from this decision to this decision and nothing's working in that moment. Everything keeps going wrong because they just keep jumping around. Right. So, yeah. And so the way to bring that part of the brain back online is to lower the level of stress chemicals and trigger the brain to produce feel-good chemicals that allows blood to return to that prefrontal cortex. But it can be practically impossible to do that when you're in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that the stress chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol that create that fight, freeze, flight, emergency state are stronger 
than feel-good chemicals. So the effects on the brain and body of those chemicals, because they're designed for survival, because it's more important to focus on the wild animal that's going to attack us than on the pretty flowers, it means that while we are feeling those negative emotions, and of course, the longer we've been feeling those negative emotions, the more intense it is because those chemicals have been in our system longer, so they've had a stronger effect, it can be very difficult to pull ourselves out of it. So that's number one. Number two is the fact that the brain is constantly trying to predict the future <laughs> based on how you're feeling in this moment. And the brain is not very good at <laughs> predicting the future. So in other words, when you are feeling like hopeless, there's no point. Everything I do it fails. There must be something wrong with me or nobody wants what I have. Nobody wants my thing or whatever it is. In that moment, as you think about later today or tomorrow or next week or next month, or if someone says to you, you know, hey, come to this event, mm -hmm. you know, that'll help. Your brain is looking at the future and thinking, I'm going to feel exactly the way I feel now. That's not going to help. It's still, I'm still going to be hopeless. I'm still going to be, it's still going to be pointless for me to do anything. So the reason I'm pointing that out is because it feels that way because your whole brain and body are buying into it because it's a survival state. And so it's like when you watch a scary movie, you know, the brain and body behave as if what you're watching is real. And that's why we, you know, we get frightened in a, in a scary movie, even though we know it's just a movie. The difference is that the conscious mind is still knowing, okay, this is just a movie. But despite that, you can still feel the, the feelings pretty strongly if, if it's a convincing movie, if it's a movie that's well done. Here, there is no screen in front of us. So we think that it's real. We think because I feel this way and because it mm -hmm. seems that way, then it's real. But the brain is simply behaving as if we're in physical danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This particular thought, this is kind of more well-documented brain research. And we all know this. We, we all kind of experience this in our day-to-day -day life, but it's an actual thing. Mm -hmm. The brain just is not very good at making predictions in the future. Right. And so, you know, reminding yourself of these things. So when things start to go wrong, remind yourself like you would a friend. So think of it as you have a friend who's saying, you know what, everything is going wrong. And, and whatever you're experiencing, imagine your friend is experiencing that and telling you about it and telling you how they're feeling. And they're feeling this, you know, what you're feeling. And then ask yourself, what would I say to that person to reassure them or to remind them that just because we can't see a solution doesn't mean there isn't one. And most of the solutions and the options and opportunities that we eventually come across, we couldn't see before. It's like you're driving along a road, we can't see around corners. So it's only as you approach it, oh, there it is. The other analogy I was going to use is, and I was answering someone on social media about this, you know, when you drive from one place to another, say you're going to drive from wherever you are to the next town, you can't see that town for most of the journey, but it doesn't mean it's not there, right? And this is the same. We're going along doing whatever actions and, and activities we're doing to create a business or build a business and reach people that we can help. And most of the journey of that is not being able to see the next destination, because that's just life. And so you think this has gone wrong and that's gone wrong and that's gone wrong. It doesn't mean that there isn't a solution. We often see it when we get closer to it. So that's those two points. And then the third point is the fact that the original roots for those patterns, for that pattern of everything's going wrong. And I, I can't tell you how familiar I am with that recurring pattern for most of my life up until like eight years ago. And the original root of those patterns will be in the unconscious part of the brain, your self-image and worldview. And that self-image and worldview is what everything you're experiencing now is based on. And the great news is that that can be changed. And that's how we changed our experiences so that now it's not a case of everything's going wrong. We don't have that recurring pattern. We're able to see things differently 
because we changed those original unconscious references that Mm -hmm. were causing that in the first place. Yeah. I know for myself that when we started to dig into this and, and really start to break open what's there, that whole pattern of everything's going wrong, recognizing that wasn't the first time that I ever felt that. And, you know, being able to walk that back, back to those original references, those original experiences in childhood, and then being able to change that actually has the greatest impact on what's going on in the future right now. That is the bigger topic here. And we would like to invite you to a masterclass that we have that'll break that open a little bit more, explain that understanding a little bit more and how you can start to do some of that work for yourself to make some of those changes. That free masterclass, as Steve says, will go into the details of how your self-image and worldview were created in your brain. It's a physical structure in your brain. And most importantly, how it can be changed, how you can change it the way we changed ours. It's a free masterclass. It's about 38 minutes, and we would love to have you there. If you're in that space where everything seems like it's going wrong for you, this could be an opportunity for you to actually make some major changes and and get out of that. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you there. Have a wonderful rest of your day. See you next time. Bye.